India is blessed by scores of rivers from north to the south, from east to the west. The Himalayan mountains lying all along the northern border provide the required water for the rivers that flow in North India. The South Indian rivers get water from the advancing monsoons or the retreating monsoons. But rains have been quite favorable to India though they are seasonal. That's the main reason why this small piece of land that accounts to about one fortieth of the land area of the world is supporting nearly 16% of the world population. Of every six people in the world, one lives in India. It has been able to provide food. Farmers have been able to till very fertile lands, grow well. We don't have any scarcity of food provided. The seasonal monsoons do not fail. There's a reason why we build dams across the rivers and store water in the reservoirs for those periods when the situation turns dry, reservoirs dry up or rivers dry up. So we should have enough water stored in our reservoirs so that farmers are in a position to get the needed water for growing crops. Today, let us discuss about the Great Northern Plains. The Great Northern Plains is that area of India which is bounded by the foothills of the Himalayas in the north. We call them as Shivaliks, the Shivalik Mountains. They are also called as the foothills, also called as the Outer Himalayas. So here you have the Shivaliks. And down below, we have the Peninsular Plateau. The Peninsular Plateau. The area in between the Shivalik Mountains and the Peninsular Plateau is what we call as the Great Indian Plains. Or you can even call them as Great Northern Plains. Now the great northern plains, as the word itself says, they lie to the north of India, northern part of India, one thing. They are plains. Plains means the contour of the land is flat. The contour is flat. You don't have rocky hills here in this region. I'm showing you. The entire area we will cover and see once. Here comes Pakistan, this is Pakistan, this is our Indian border in the northwest. And starting from here, see, it goes till Assam, moves down. Yeah, this entire region, you call it as the Great Northern Plains, bounded by the Shivalik in the north. The Vindhya and the Chota Nagpur plateaus in the south hills in the south. Then irrigation part. From where do they get water? The water is provided to the northern plains mainly by three important rivers. One is Indus, the second one is Ganges, 
the third one is Brahmaputra. But we don't have the entire Indus river flowing in India. Much of the Indus river flows in Pakistan. But the Sutlej river is the river that provides water to the Indian land, the Sutlej. Then you have the Ganges here. Here you have Yamuna. New Delhi is on the banks of Yamuna. Then you have the Ganges. Then Gomati, Gandak. All these rivers flow here. Soon flows in Bihar. They all join together. Then they flow into the Bay of Bengal. So Ganges is the second river. If you move to the east, further east, you have another important river which takes birth in Tibet and flows towards east. Then to the extreme east of India, northeast of India, it enters in, flows down Assam, then joins river Ganges and empties its water into the Bay of Bengal. So Sutlej here, you can even say Indus, nothing wrong. Indus, Sutlej is a tributary of Indus. We have the Ganges here. We have the Brahmaputra here. Let me draw Brahmaputra too. Here it enters India, flows in, then enters Bangladesh, joins the river Ganges and the river Ganges and the Brahmaputra rivers after they join they divide into a number of distributaries and empty their water into the Bay of Bengal. That's why in the beginning itself I said we are blessed. How do we say we are really blessed? Number of people who dwell here in the Sutlej, Ganges and Brahmaputra river banks is something enormous. Let me take for example the state of Uttar Pradesh. This is the state of Uttar Pradesh. The population of Uttar Pradesh is nearly 20 crores. Beyond that, 20 crores. Most of the people are busy with agriculture. The reason is that you have alluvial soil on in this area. In the northern plains, alluvial soil. And the alluvial soil that we have on the dangerous plains, it is said, is the best in the world. The most fertile area in the world lies in our northern plains. From where, where does this alluvial soil come? It is a depositional soil which is brought by the various tributaries of river Sutlej and the various tributaries of river Gages. You all know that the North Indian rivers are all perennial. These rivers, they are all perennial rivers. Perennial. What does it mean? Perennial river is one which flows throughout the year. It never dries up. The river never dries up. The South Indian rivers are not like that. They all dry up in summer. You don't have a drop of water in the South Indian rivers in summer. But the North Indian rivers flow throughout the year all the 365 days of the year is an important point. How does it happen? In the rainy season, the moisture laden clouds that get driven towards Himalayas that come from the Indian Ocean and Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, they get driven to the north and they are prevented by the Himalayas from crossing over because they are very high mountains, lofty mountains. Clouds cannot cross them. 
So the Himalayan part, the Shivalik get very heavy rains, very heavy rains. And all the rivers in northern India will be in floods. That's for a period of about four to five months. What happens next? Then the winter comes, rivers will be flowing. After winter, you have summer. In summer, the snow laden peaks of Himalayas, the snow cover, snow cap peaks of Himalayas, they start melting due to their rise in temperature. Now, the rivers start getting melted snow as water. Till the next monsoon rains happen, the rivers get water continuously. Blessed we are, I said, because the rivers in northern India get water around the year. They never say our rivers have dried. Okay, depositional activity of Satellite, Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers have made the north, northern plains very fertile. Alluvial soil gets spread over the entire place. It is brought from the Himalayas. It gets distributed, spread over the entire northern plains. It is the largest alluvial track in the entire world. Largest alluvial track in the entire world is in North India on the banks of river Ganges and other rivers. Average width is around 340 kilometers here. Width and the Gozod tapering towards east, here it's about 240 kilometers. Plains are flat, I told you. Rocky hills, you don't find it. Rocks are not exposed. Wherever you go, it's all plain land, which is a great push for the farmers to till the land and grow. You need not even level the land. Let's see what the what are the importances of these rivers and the depositional activity of the rivers. First one, you have already imagined irrigation and agriculture. The states in North India, they grow very well. Punjab, you know, it's known as the basket of wheat basket. West Bengal are known for rice. Uttar Pradesh, I'm taking a few examples, known for sugar cane, wheat, rice. Entire North India is plenty as far as the production of food grains is concerned. Second point we discussed already, the rivers are perennial. Blessed are the farmers. Vast fertile land from west to the east, from west to the east. Highly fertile land. As the ground is plain, land is plain, you have roads, railways, tracks laid down and means of communication all these have turned to be easy. So you find speedy progress all over in the North Indian land. Then industrialization, you have lots of industries, Punjab, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, up to West Bengal, Assam, everywhere you find lots of industries because transportation has turned to be easy and land is leveled, thick population, urbanization, lots of cities. You find nearly 80 to 100 cities in the northern plains. The cities are sprung up because agricultural activity is very high, roads are good, transportation is good, communication is good and one of the main criteria that is required for an industry, population, you have labor, you have people. So trade has prospered like anything. And 
As I conclude, I would say, you see lot of pilgrim centers in Lord. Pilgrim centers. Starting from Varanasi. You can name them. You do the activity. You list all the main pilgrim centers of North India, especially those which are in the place. That has given a fillip to tourism. Okay, this is about the great northern plains. As I told you earlier, open the atlas. Please trace and track the course of rivers. Find out what do they grow. Go for food maps. Coming maps pertain to industries. And try to get yourself enriched. Collect as much information as possible from maps in a good atlas. Atlas should be a part and parcel of your study. Thank you.